what I want to concentrate today on what 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 is going on in the West Bank. Uh, many people know what's going on in Gaza, yes. the war, the genocide, the ethnic cleansing, the war crimes of the state of Israel and of the Israeli uh, leaders. But the West Bank, it's not known. They are trying to hide what's going on in the, on, in the West Bank. And, and we do get some reports, um, and there was actually um, uh, the head of the uh, Army Central Command, I guess, who was stepping down, just, uh, you know, issued a report about imminent disaster in the West Bank. Um, and, of, of course, we do get some reports about settler violence, in particular, uh, after October 7th, and just um, how things have ramped up, but but please um, uh, share with us what your experience in seeing and what you know is happening out there. Yes, what what is happening in West Bank now yes. is that the Israeli National Security Minister is a fascist extremist from yeah. Hebron. He was not allowed to be in the Israeli military when he was in the military age for his violence attitude. He was one of the main follower of Ma'ir Kahana, Kah movement, which, which was announced by the State Department in the 90s. Just two years ago, they removed, the, removed them from the terrorist list. So we are talking about Israeli National Security Minister as, uh, as someone who spent his life trying to kill Palestinians, trying to make our life harder and harder. Now he's the national security minister in Israel. So yes. a minister, I'm not talking about <laughs> parties, okay? Yes. The yes. other security, the other big figure in the Israeli government now is Smotrich. Yes. Smotrich is the Israeli finance minister and he's a minister in the Israeli defense ministry responsible about the West Bank. So the main decision maker for the West Bank is an extremist, fascist Israeli settler. This is something very important to describe for the people. And he's responsible about our water, he's responsible about our electricity, he's responsible about uh, import, export, and our daily life. So, yes. Smotrich, something very important, is one of the main founders of an NGO called Rakavim. He spent his life trying to remove the Palestinian identity and the Palestinians from Area C. That's what is written in, in Rakavim, and that's what they were doing. Now, Smotrich, the founder of Rakavim, and the executive director of Rakavim is the head of the civil administration. Yes. Civil administration is responsible about our life. Right. They are the main rulers in the West Bank. Yes. For the PA, there is no PA. PA is without any authority. Yeah. Okay? So those people use the war to make our life miserable and to make our life crazy and not able to do anything. So what the Israeli National Security Minister did, ask the Israeli police not to intervene when settlers attack Palestinian people or Palestinian villages. So the soldiers, the, the policemen are not now. They were not doing it in the past. They were fairly doing it sometimes. Yes. They are not now, you know, to uh, arrest Israeli settlers for their violence. Right. He gave out, the Israeli National Security Minister, more than 100,000 weapons to Israelis. And yeah. mainly it's their followers. So yeah. we have another militia now with guns intimidating Palestinians, making the Palestinian life harder and harder. This is crazy. Yes. And something else very important Itamar Bingver did. Palestinian prisoners are without food. Palestinian prisoners are without food. Yes. You know what it means without food? 
Yes, this is in the West Bank. We're not talking Gaza here. Yeah, we're talking about West Bank. Palestinian yeah. prisoners, they get one meal with less than 1,000 calories. The majority of the prisoners who were released lately, recently, lost between 30 to 40 kilograms from their bodies, from their meat, because of no food for the Palestinian prisoners. Something else, very important, torture Palestinian prisoners, attack Palestinian prisoners. I want to now to go about Smotrich plans. More than 20,000 new settlement units, which is more than th uh, three years of his previous uh, people. More and more settlements, more and more house demolitions. They are, do, you know, the, the bulldozers almost daily in the West Bank demolishing Palestinian houses. So that the house demolition rate increased to maybe double or triple the amount of yearly amount of house demolition. Not only that, West Bank is fragmented. Checkpoints are everywhere. The soldiers at the checkpoints, they catch Palestinians, they dehumanize them, they delay them, they beat them up, and they take videos of what they do to them, and they are proud to show it on TikTok. There is a TikTok challenge. Who is the soldier who's more tough with Palestinians in the West Bank? So there is no continuity. Economically, no jobs and no salaries. People are broken. They don't have money for food. Something else uh, uh, very important, they reduced the amount of water which they sell us to 40%. So for the first time ever, Ramallah is without water now because Ramallah used to have a lot of water. In Hebron, we had water shortage for a very long time. In yeah. my house, I get water every four weeks from the Hebron municipality because the amount of water in Hebron is not enough and you need two turns. And something else, it's our own water. The water aquifers are in the West Bank. Yes. They, we are not allowed to dig. They are allowed because they are the authority. And they sell us the water and they don't give us what we need. We are talking about West Bank. Electricity, the same. We get much less e electricity uh, of what we need for personal use. So they control electricity, they control the water, they control import, they control export. Today, the Israeli military in Hebron and Salfit and uh, Naplos, I think, they raided the agriculture shops. And they confiscated all the fertilizers. They've confiscated a lot of tools. They told them not to sell certain, uh, you know, because many people, because they don't have work, they went to the land. And they don't want us to depend on our land. Yeah. We, they want us to stay dependent on them of what they give us and what they sell us because they don't give us anything for free. Israel doesn't give aid to Palestinians because many Israelis, when they speak to international media, they lie about giving aid to Palestinians. Israel doesn't give Palestinians anything for free. In the contrary, they steal our natural resources. They steal our taxation, they steal our money, they steal our water, they steal our uh, our land. So more house demolition, more settlements, more settler violence all over West Bank, more army brutality, more fragmentation. Palestinian prisoners, they have no food, they are starving. We don't feel safe in our houses. We don't feel safe in our communities here in Hebron. We are very restricted. It's ugly behind me, fence. It means something. Physical fence means I want to, to feel safe. I want to protect myself by fence only. There is no other choice. I was attacked five times last month. Five times. They stole my water uh, tanks. They stole my lemon tree. They, they damaged my terrace. They stole my CCTV cameras. They throw stones. Uh, they verbally, uh, you know, uh, insult you from time to time. They threaten to kill you from time to time. They are walking around with weapons all the time. Yes. And what's new after October 7th is the brutality of the Israeli soldiers who are acting as militia, not as an army. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, there was a story... Um just a few days ago from the, the uh, South Hebron Hills of uh, settlers who had um, 
and and this is happening all over, of course, but in your neighborhood as well. Uh, you know, settlers had 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 rampaged through uh, a, a Palestinian home, destroyed everything, um, and finally, um, you know, an IDF soldier came um, and said to the owner of the house, "If you insist on coming home, you can, as long as you accept its trashed condition." It's is it, it's like he was selling a house to him, right? You have to take it as it is. Um, army drones and photographed every detail. If the residents moved so much as a stone or pulled a tarp over an unroofed house, it would be considered an illegal construction, and then and then the army would come back and destroy them, right? Yeah. And as you know, somebody, um, uh, Faoud Al Amor oversees a council of 24 villages in the South Hebron Hills said, it's easy to leave, it's not easy to come back. Oh. Yeah, so again, it's just describing the situation where settlers come, destroy a house, and then the army comes and says, you move anything, you know, and then the army will come and destroy it again. I mean, you can't touch anything that's been destroyed. It, it's like, this is- It happened to me. It yeah, happened okay. to me many times. Yeah. They destroyed my walls, my fences, and the army didn't allow me to rebuild them or to <laughs> right. reinstall them. You have, you need a permit. This is what they tell me <laughs> to re rebuild what the settlers uh, destroyed. Yes, yes. It happened to me, to me many times. Yeah. That, and not not something else. Yeah. After October, before October seventh, Israeli military was the backbone of settler violence. They are they were the ones who are escorting the settlers to attack Palestinians, and many soldiers participated with the settlers in their civilian uniform. Now, it's mixed. It's more open that the settlers and the soldiers attack Palestinians together, and many settlers are in, an, in their army uniform. They attack Palestinians. I was attacked and tortured by settlers and soldiers together, and then I was attacked by settlers in an army uniform here in the house. They, they attacked my house. They stole my CCTV cameras. They damaged my yard. They, they did many bad things to me. Yes. And to many other Palestinians, by the way, not only Isa. I use myself as a case study. Uh, I'm not. Uh, I'm not the center of the uh, of, of of what is going on. But I use myself as an example of what's going on. And I file complaints. Palestinians usually don't. I file complaints to the Israeli police, and it's useless. Yes. Um. Uh, I, I, is it. Is my camera uh, adjusted? Okay, people are letting me know on the on the chat. Just to you look, you confirm. look great, man. You look, you look great, dude. Thank you much. That you're the first person who said that to me in a long time. So I, uh, I appreciate, uh, I appreciate uh, that. Okay, okay. <laughs> I understand now. Yeah, and um, remember, if if people have questions, go ahead and put them in the chat. Um, you know, um, when. When I've talked to Daoud Nasser at Tent of Nations, uh, he tells me, I mean, he has, uh, you know, close relatives who've, who've left, uh, you know, he has siblings in Australia who tell him, it's like, Daoud, come on, you know, um, leave. So um, how about you? I mean, you clearly, like Daoud, um, aren't going anywhere. Daoud is doing great. Yeah. And many other Palestinians are doing great in the West Bank now. Uh, but we, are, we don't have continuity now. We don't visit each other. But right. everybody, every group is doing great in South Mount Hebron. There are many Palestinian great uh, activists and even with Israeli and international activists, they are defending South Mount Hebron. H2 in Hebron has people who are defending H2 in Hebron. Uh, Bethlehem, uh, Dawood, and other people are doing great work in Bethlehem, and many other international Israeli and Palestinian activists are in the fields and protecting Palestinians right. in uh, Naples, in Ramallah, even in Site 48. Palestinians don't give up yet, and they stay firm and strong to uh, not 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 to lose and to protect the land and to protect ourselves. That's good to hear. Yeah. Um, a, a friend of ours, Eli McCarthy, is uh, trying to put to, together a group that's actually going to go um, to the border of Gaza and Egypt um, in next month. And um, he and a, a number of others um, have been on a series of calls, and we're talking about trying to get regular delegations um, September, October, you know, just getting people over there um, 
on a really regular basis. So clearly that helps having internationals um, on hand. Okay, be creative, be loud. <laughs> it's the time to act. It's the time to be active. It's the time to show your solidarity. And we are very proud of you. Uh, Palestinians here in Palestine, especially in Hebron, were concerning about international's role. But after what we see now in the universities, in the campuses, in the streets of the United States all over, and even in the UK and Europe and everywhere on earth, we are very proud of you. You are really making the occupation costly and making us more valuable. It's something very important. We are in defense. We are protecting our narrative. We are protecting our land. We are protecting our rights to resist peacefully. So really you are doing great and keep doing it and don't give up. This, you know, someone is asking me what you should do. Be creative in what are you doing? We call for nonviolence resistance. We are doing well on the ground. Our lives are, are in danger. We are attacked, we are beaten, we, we are arrested, but there is no change without making the prior, without we being, we, uh, be, uh, being willing you know, to pay the price. And many Palestinians are willing to pay the price. And you do great work. You continue campaigning, resisting, and make fighting the occupation part of your daily routine. And many people are doing that. I'm very proud of them, not only me. I feel uh, stronger in my society now, in my community. They see me more hero. Because look, Isa, look how many people in the United States are really supporting us. It's only not only Trump. It's not only Biden. It's not only the official uh, uh, ministers and presidents and uh, people are talking to mainstream media. There are a lot, a lot of people are supporting Palestinian rights. This is what we want. This is what how we can make a change. It's a momentum. Let's use it well. Let's work for freedom for everybody, justice for everybody. And we, the Palestinians, are using nonviolence resistance as the best tool to make the occupation costly and to be treated as a nation. This is something very important. As a nation, it's not about shelter and food. It's not about animals. We don't want to be treated as animals. We want to be treated as a nation with full equal rights, with freedom, with justice, as everybody else. Yes. So um, tell us a little bit about, um, I, just politically, I'm, I'm... The, the Palestinian Authority, I mean, are there people that that we should be looking to, that you should be looking to, to actually uh, run a decent government when, when that becomes possible? We have many great Palestinian leaders, great qualified Palestinian leaders, much more than the Israelis, much more than any other people. Palestinians are qualified and they have all the skills to govern themselves. The main issue is... The Israeli occupation, Israeli fertility, Israeli apartheid, and the mm -hmm. blind support of the American administration, many other administrations all over the world to Israel. And yes. without that blind support, Israel would not be able to maintain the occupation for that long. Absolutely. And they can, can protect their apartheid. They can't protect their illegal settlements. And something very important, let's use it. Israel is not defending itself. Israel is defending its occupation, apartheid and illegal settlements and supremacy. This is what's going on. It's not about Jews' rights. We love Judaism. We are against any kind of anti-Semitism and it's not part of our struggle and we don't want it in the contrary. It's part of Trump administration. It's part of the right wing in, G in Germany and extremists. They are the anti-Semites, not us. We are proud that we have a moral uh, movement and anti-Semitism is not allowed. And Islamophobia is not allowed. And any kind of racism is not allowed. This is our movement. This is what we want. And we want democracy and civil rights for everybody. This is how we believe as Palestinians. The majority of the Palestinians, this is the way they, they believe. And so Israel is not defending itself. It's defending its occupation apartheid and illegal settlements and their supremacy. And the blind support to them is the main problem. And something else, the blind support to the Palestinian Authority, because Israel made an elite in our society and they are giving, you know, support to corrupt leaders to stay in power. They are the corrupt ones and they are not our face. We have amazing leaders from Fatah, from everybody, from PLO. So we can do it if we have the right to do it, because I'm not allowed to, to uh, you know, to have my own NGO here in Palestine. I need registration and they don't give me. 
Yes. I'm not allowed to form a party as a Palestinian who is critical of Mahmoud Abbas. And I told many American leaders, why you are silent about the Palestinian Authority corruption? They don't care. They care only about the relationship between the Palestinian security forces and the Israeli security forces to shut off our voices. They made the Palestinian Authority as a subcontractor of the Israeli occupation. Are we bad? No. It's the system which forced the PA to do that, and we can get back to democracy. We do reform for the PLO, and we can really choose a great leadership. Yeah. Uh, and we have one of the main leaders in jail, Marwan Barghouti. He can be released, and he can be the only leader to be elected, because all the polls saying that he will win against any other uh, Palestinian yeah. leader. But the Palestinians, they have leadership. They have amazing people, and they can really lead themselves but the yeah. occupation, apartheid, and pride support uh, is the main issue. The main problem, we are not able to really go on. Yes. And people don't always know yeah. that that Palestine has, I mean, a, a, an incredibly high percentage of, of literate, highly educated citizens. I mean, so it is a place that would be ready um, for... Look, it's not only in Palestine. We have yeah. many great Palestinian leaders in the United States. They can come back and govern. We have of many course. great, amazing Palestinian people in, in all over the world, in Europe, in UK. They're amazing. Course. They're amazing. And they're really, yeah. they have all the skills, uh, all, all the leadership skills. They're, yeah. they're amazing. Who says yeah. that we don't have leadership? We have really amazing leadership all over yeah. the world. That's great to hear. Yeah. Someone asked, are there uh, international volunteer groups working in Hebron right now? Are there folks there or did they leave? Uh, we don't have many international groups, unfortunately. We hope that we see people come here because it's allowed and it's easier even at the airports because th there are no tourists and Israel needs tourists now. So they allow people to come and they don't make it hard at the airport. So everybody is welcome to come. Everybody is welcome to join uh, us in our struggle here and volunteer and help us with uh, Friends of Hebron and or any other group. And be united, this is something very important. Be united, be united and be integrated <laughs> with each other. This is something very important we should talk about. Yes, yeah. Um, there's also a question just about the, that word Samud that we hear a lot of. Um, uh, how does uh, Samud, which we usually hear translated as just steadfastness, um, how does that keep you going? That's the question on the chat. Or maybe uh, again, yeah, yeah Samud. Um, how do you, how does that uh, that attitude of Samud? How does that keep you going, or what does keep you going? What does me? Your support, your solidarity, your protection. You really, you know, you really made us stronger. You emboldened us. This is something very important. Yeah. And what makes us uh, stay? It's our rights and our people's rights, yeah. and not to give up to occupation. And we chose to be part of the solution this is something very important we didn't choose to be part of the problem we use non-violence resistance to be part of the solution we pay we pay high price yes because we are change makers and change makers and defenders usually pay high price for their passion yes and uh, something else it's about our morals it's about our principles it's about the future of our children who wants to be to live in without 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 oppression, without occupation, without injustice, without apartheid. So we want to build a better future for everybody. This is what makes us continue doing what are we doing. Yes, yeah. Say something about your family. Um, who's who's there with you? I have Watan with me. Watan, he's staying with me. He's amazing, uh, young, uh, <laughs> I, I say young man. He's a child. He's 12 years old. But uh, <laughs> yes, but he's uh, he's uh, he doesn't like me to say that he's a child. Come, come, Watan. <laughs> come, say hi. <laughs> Yalla. Yalla. He, he's, he was biking and he, he plays a lot of sports. It's it's hi. summer. Hey, here is Watan. Watan means Watan means homeland. Okay. Good to see you. He's a soccer. He's a football player. He likes football. He likes he likes to play everything, you know. Yes. Yeah. It's it's hard for him to study, but he likes to play, yeah. as everybody else. Of course. As if all the children. Yeah. Yeah. 
So what's a typical day for him? I mean, school's out. But, you know, there is how... no school. It's it's summer. Yeah. You yeah. know, unfortunately, there are, you know, I don't want to stay in front of him, ask him to get into the room. There are no children around to play with. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's it's uh, easy. It's not easy, and it's not uh, it's not safe for him to pass the checkpoint. Yeah. And and to be very honest, he's afraid to uh, to sleep in his room. He sleeps in my room. Yeah. Okay. Good to know. Yeah. Yeah. And what's a typical? It doesn't for you. Yeah. For me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm doing restoration for uh, for the house. I'm building a cinema. Yeah. And uh, so next time you come and watch movies here. <laughs> yep. and uh, uh and i want to com the community to have a place to 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 watch movies and i go around usually to if i have meetings if i have the zoom if i have media i go to the families i talk to them i try to help them so this is what i do usually but i'm staying in the house usually because it's very dangerous to leave the house alone now of course yeah yeah and um uh, are you dependent on, uh, obviously, before you came on, I was reminding people about the Friends of Hebron, um, the, the nonprofit, um, and there's a, a link to it in the chat. Um, economically, um, are, are you dependent upon, uh, your work is with the, the Friends of Hebron, is that correct? I used to have my daily job. Mm-hmm and a uh, paid job as uh, as an electrical engineer i don't do that anymore it's not uh, i can't leave the house i can't leave the area and, yeah. and we are trying to uh, reform youth against settlements to have a, a proper ngo to give uh, projects and salaries to the activists here and give projects to the community as well yes we did a few good projects uh, uh, during the war uh, we helped the families financially we did protection uh, to certain houses, fences, uh, we strengthen the doors of many families because this is what the families ask us to strengthen their doors and to put fences. Uh, we have surveillance projects, you know, to put uh, to install CCTV cameras for the families to uh, to protect themselves and observe what's going on uh, around their 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 homes. We do legal work. We do uh, a lot of um, uh, tours. We do media. We do awareness. We try to stay you know, uh, working on the ground to protect the Palestinian narrative as well. So I hope that we get support and we will, and if anybody has ideas of fundraising, because it's the first time, it's the first year that we work on fundraising and uh, trying to depend on Friends of Hebron to cover our expenses. That's what I Because thought. we used to be a group of volunteers in Youth Against Settlements and Friends of Hebron. Now we try to, to do it in a, in, a, in a different way. Yes, so that's something that that we can talk about certainly, and uh, you're going to be in the states, um, right? I, I know you're meeting with Michael Spath um, uh, in Indiana, um, so that's in September. Uh, I was planning to come to the states last year. It didn't work because of uh, the war, mm -hmm. and I, I'm planning to come to the states this year. It's uh, I'm I'm waiting the doctor to tell me if it's okay to go in September because I'm under medication until now and physical therapy. If it's not September, it will be October for sure. I'm coming this year. I miss the United States. I miss the, my friends in the United States, and really I want to breathe a little bit outside Hebron. Yes. Okay. So we will be in touch with you about that. There's some thought that, yes. that if you're in the Midwest. Um, We'd love to have you uh, come to uh, the West Coast. Um, I'm in Seattle. So, it, you know, you've got me in Seattle, you've got Mike in the Midwest, and you've got Miko in the D.C. area. And um, there's going to be a group of us meeting in D.C. Um, in September, uh, shortly after you're scheduled to be in the Midwest. So we would love to have you uh, join us um, in Washington, D.C. Uh, when we've got a group out there. So that yes, be... I will come to Washington DC. I will I will go everywhere. Perfect. I will, I, I'm I'm doing a long tour. You know, I will not say no to anyone. You know, I I, I want to be in touch with everybody in the United States and uh, really to uh, uh, try to uh, rebuild the movement and try to reconnect the United States activists to the grassroots activists in yes. in Hebron and, and in the West Bank. Yeah. And Canada is an option. Yes. I I I I, I know I I'm Daniel. I for sure I miss you. Canada is an option, and I, I I will try to come to Canada as well. 
So, yeah, but I, I have American visa, but I don't, uh, I have a visa to the US. I have to apply okay. to, so maybe we, Daniel, we talk about the invitation to get a visa for Canada too. Yeah. There's a, there's a question, someone saying that they were, when they were there in um, February and March, um, that um, the, uh, it's like this, what was it, that their soldiers sort of just marching like up and down the street practically. I mean, is that, you know, just sort of dominating. Is that pretty typical? After October 7th, the soldiers became militia, not soldiers. You can't, okay. yeah. you can't describe them as soldiers. Yeah. soldiers. They are acting as a militia and even yeah. violating the instructions and the commands of the Israeli military. That level. Yeah. Each soldier is acting according to his mentality and his ideology and his hero. And many of them, they see Itamar Bingvir, the Israeli uh, fascist, as their future leader as their hero. So soldiers are around, soldiers are teaching people, teaching houses, dehumanizing Palestinians, uh, uh, you know, attacking Palestinian houses. So soldiers are really very bad these days. Yeah. More than normal. You know, usually they are bad, but now they are much worse Not than more. uh, uh, normal yeah. days. Yes. Yeah. Um, the soldier, there was a, a soldier who attacked you when you were walking, um, just showing Lawrence Wright from the, the New Yorker fairly recently. Um, what I heard, I mean, he maybe like, you know, was had like 10 days, you know, in jail or something. Is that, I mean, do you know who these guys are? <laughs> the soldier who attacked me in February? Yeah. Well, I thought there was a more recent really... one too, but yeah. And I was attacked many times and after that even, you know. Yeah. And recently I was attacked by soldiers as well. But I want to give you an example of when I was attacked in February, okay? Yes. The Israeli National Security Minister tweeted to support that soldier and to attack me. I remember. Okay? Yeah. Israeli National Security Minister, who's supposed to give me security as well because occupation is responsible about my security as well. Yeah. Israeli army sent out a press release and described me as a provocator that I provoke I provoked that soldier. Okay. Yes. The Israeli media described me as a provocator that I provoked the honest soldier who had to beat me up and to dehumanize me and almost kill me. The Israeli public supported that soldier. So the brutality and the, the extremism in the Israeli society is not because of October 7th. They showed it more. They exposed it more yeah. after October 7th, but it's before. Yeah. So there is no accountability for the Israeli soldier, and that soldier didn't go to jail. He was suspended for a few days from the army, and he got a gift from Israeli uh, supporters, uh, a vacation, I don't know where, and he got a lot of money. Yeah. yeah. A gift, <laughs> a lot of money. You know, yeah. Attacking me gives him money. Attacking Palestinians gives the soldiers money and fame. They become more famous. Yeah. They treat them as heroes. The Israeli soldiers who are killing, torturing Palestinians, they are treated as heroes in Israel. The war criminals, the Israeli war criminals are treated in Israel as heroes. Yes, October 7th simply unleashed what was already, you know, barely restrained before so um yeah yeah so there's really just there's there's almost no um holding back uh of, of settlers i mean it's uh, it's just horrifying no what holding back settlers work with the government yeah the settlers are supported by the government itamar bingvir gave out 100,000 guns weapons to yeah. his supporters and his uh, he's creating militias even in, inside Israel. Yeah. Even against the Israeli leftists as well, not only about us. It's about the Israelis as well. Yeah. Yeah, the, the US media is covering it a, a, at least a little bit better, but um you know, change just comes slowly to the US Congress. Um it's but it's why we're going back to D.C. in September and trying to just keep pressure on. Um, what, what we hear is that um, 
the Democratic Party and Biden in particular, if he remains the candidate, um, are, they're losing support in, because of Gaza and because of the West Bank, including in key states like Michigan and Pennsylvania. So, so you know, um, it, 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 it is making a difference slowly, I think, just politically. But, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's um, day by day. Yeah. Yeah, it's to be very honest, the situation is very hard in Palestine, but the Palestinian cause is really the first cause all over the world. We see more people supporting us, more people know that truth, even not from you know our our side. Everybody yeah. now is aware of what's going on. And they, they know what is the problem. The problem is the Israeli occupation and the Israeli greedy to have Israel from the river to the sea. Yeah. This is why they were concerned when they heard people chanting from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. Yeah. Because Israel is from the river to the sea. The, the reality is Israel is from the river to the sea as an apartheid state. This is the reality. I see Fel uh, raising his uh, hand to ask a question. Who's that? So, Fel. I don't see it, but but Pam, can you uh, allow uh, whoever is wanting to ask a question it, to uh, jump on? Phil, why don't you type your question into the chat? Okay, that's what we're that's what we're attempting to do here with so many people on the call. Yeah. Okay. If you could just type it into the chat, we'd appreciate it. Thank you. I, I've done that twice, unfortunately, and it's not been read out. So. Oh, okay. Sorry. So go ahead. Go ahead. What's the well, question? Thanks very much. Actually, uh, my name's Phil Chetwind, and I'm um, I'm a member of the Network of Photographers for Palestine, based in Edinburgh. Um, and uh, we heard about your uh, webinar. It's been a fantastic experience, actually. Um, and thanks to uh, to you for organising it and uh, to Issa for pa participating so br brilliantly. I want, uh, the question I had was, how easy is it to maintain a a, a non a peaceful coexistence or a peaceful resistance? I'm sorry peaceful resistance approach uh, and is there any feeling in Palestine do you think that another intifada may result from the Gaza genocide uh, we are acting according to our morals and principles and histor historically Palestinians did very well to use non-violence resistance as the mean method sure. to end Israeli occupation and apartheid. And it's not easy, to be very honest. Uh, Israeli brutality is not allowing us to use non-violence resistance. Non-violence resistance, according to the Israeli military law, is not allowed. I was arrested, convicted in the military law for my non-violence approach. So it's not the United States that you have civil rights and non-violence resistance is, not, is allowed. It's not allowed. But we use it because it's moral, it's our moral, it's our principles. It's about being able to make you part of our movement. It's something very important to bring solidarity, movement, engagement with Palestine. Something else, nonviolence resistance in my eyes increases the cost of the Israeli occupation more and neutralize their brutality and their oppression. It's not easy. They don't act like that. They shoot people like that. But nonviolence resistance is the only way now in West Bank we can we can make a change. This is what we do. This is what we were doing for a long time. And we will continue doing it because it's our strategy. And this is what we believe in. Is it easy? Never easy. And you should be willing to pay the price for anything you do against the Israeli occupation because the occupation controls all small details of our life. Yeah, so thanks for that question, um, Phil. And uh, I want to let Isa have the last word before uh, we close, but um, also just thank you again to uh, our sponsoring organizations. Um, and I think Mike's going to put that up there on the 
on the screen. And a reminder, the next webinar, uh, Wednesday, July 17th, 1 p.m. Eastern time with Neve Gordon. Um, that will be uh, hosted uh, with uh, Mark Braverman and uh, should be really terrific. So yeah, any any final uh, words, instructions, and, and you know how we can help, Isa? Uh, Dora, she asked about Slicha. Yes, Slicha is doing amazing work in Hebron. Many women in our society doing a great activism and they do a great, uh, they have a great role to support me personally and support the community. And they are leading, you know, the time that the, the men are not able to do anything, the women are, they just see them, you know, doing great work. So we are very proud of our women movement in Palestine and especially mm -hmm. in Hebron. And among, uh, among them is Licha. Uh, about uh, the last word, uh, uh, we are really. Uh, in a very serious situation. We want everybody to be united. And we want the people in the United States and all over the world to be creative. We in the ground, we will not give up. We'll stay uh, strong and firm resisting the, the occupation. And I want you to tell you a big thank you from my, my community, from the people, from everybody here. What are you doing is amazing as solidarity groups. Be, keep doing it. Keep the momentum. Don't lose it. And stay strong. Be united. Be integrated. And make the occupation costly. Make apartheid costly. And let's speak louder. And let's be creative with our uh, you know, actions against the occupation and uh, apartheid. Here in West Bank, the life is very hard. But the people are so determined to end the Israeli occupation and apartheid and stay you know, uh, stay strong in holding their rights. We don't want at all to be treated as slaves anymore. And I hope that the occupation will end soon. I see it there. I see that we are much stronger than before in spite of everything going on and everything happening to us. And me personally, I promise you that I will never give up and I will stay resisting the occupation with other activists here, with everybody on the ground that one day Palestine will be free and we are lucky that we are part of the solution, not part of the problem. And thank you very much. And I'm, I'm happy to stay in touch with everybody on social media. Follow me, write to me. I will answer you and I'm ready to, to uh, uh, share ideas and uh, yes. do networking with you and uh, make, uh, make difference together. We are stronger together. We are stronger if we care about each other and let's work as a family who everybody cares about the other member of the family. This yes. is how I see everybody. Yes. No, that's beautiful and deeply. I love you, Huayda. I love, I love Huayda. She's one of my heroes. She's one <laughs> of the people who she's writing. She's, she's amazing. She's, this woman is extraordinary person. <laughs> Thank you, Huayda. I hope to see you soon. Thank you. And everybody else who I of didn't... You are yeah. all doing amazing, you know. We are no. very proud of you. And we love you too, Nisa.